Good morning. I just want to let you know that I'm praying for you and hope things are going well for your families uh, during this Holy Triduum. And we just ask God to continue to guide us um, throughout the day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that it had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dried them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow so that what I have done for you, you shall also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Last Supper. I'd like to refer to this feast as a night to remember. But recalling the Passover is so essential to our remembrance of the Last Supper. For just as it was the night of divine deliverance of the Israelites, so it is the night of divine deliverance of the followers of Christ. And just as it was the night of death passed over the homes of the Israelites, so was the night that passing over of death was for the believing Christian. And just as it was for the night that the Israelites were delivered from slavery to Egypt, so was the night the Christians were delivered from the slavery to sin. And just as it is the night that the Lamb's blood was shed for Israel's redemption, so it is the night that the Lamb of God's blood was shed for the redemption of all people. The divine deliverance of Israel reaches a high point in the instruction of God gives to Moses in today's first reading. We learn that it's through ritual celebrations that involve the whole community that God makes his presence known. At the heart of the Passover story, as a meal, described in detail as we read from the book of Exodus. Tell the whole community of Israel that every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, and it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the doorpost and the lentil of every house. Seeing the blood, death will pass over them. They are then to partake of the lamb that same night and to eat of its flesh, and unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. They are to eat it with sandals on their feet, and a staff in their hand, like those in flight. Now during the Last Supper, the people also procured for them a lamb, the Lamb of God. The following day that lamb was led to the slaughter, and was crucified. From that day on, the blood of the lamb was applied to the doorposts of their hearts, and seeing the blood of the Lamb of God on them, death passed over them. 
For that day on, the followers of the Lamb of God, the Son of God, ate unleavened bread, the bread of heaven, the Holy Eucharist. And from that day on, all people came to know they too were led by a shepherd with sandals on his feet and a staff in his hand, as they too are in flight from slavery. But not from slavery to the Egyptians, but from slavery to sin and death in this world. The account given on the institution of the Eucharist is taken from our second reading, St. Paul's letter to Corinthians. Now it's interesting, and the fact that St. John's Gospel does not give a detailed account of the Last Supper, but only makes reference to it. This is what is known by many scholars as a great omission. But what John does do through the Last Supper narrative that other evangelists do not do is make reference to the importance of service. He does this by emphasizing the washing of the apostles' feet. In John's Gospel, Jesus sees the importance in doing this so his followers don't get caught up in thinking that as companions of Jesus, they should be waited on. By no means did Jesus want this to happen. Jesus is aware of their competitiveness and their seeking recognition throughout his ministry. The most noteworthy time was they were discussing among themselves which of them was the greatest, but Jesus was telling them he was to be handed over and killed. We read in Mark chapter 9, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, he will rise. But his disciples did not understand him, and they are afraid to question him. When they came to Capernaum, and once inside, Jesus questioned them. What were you arguing about along the way? They remained silent, because they were discussing among themselves who was the greatest. Then he sat down and called the twelve together and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Then taking a child, he placed him in their midst, and putting his arms around him, he said, Whoever receives a child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. Tonight we also celebrate the institution of the priesthood. St. Paul states that priesthood above all means to be a servant and a steward. One should regard priests as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. St. John Paul II conveys to us that the steward is not the owner, but the one to whom the owner entrusts his goods, so that he will manage them justly and responsibly in exactly the same way the priest receives from Christ the treasures of salvation in order to distribute them justly and responsibly to the people to whom he was sent. These treasures are those of faith. The priest is the man of the word of God, is the man of the sacraments, is the man of the mystery of faith. Through faith, he draws to the invisible treasures which constitute the inheritance of the world's redemption by the Son of God. The priestly vocation is a mystery, the mystery of a wonderful exchange between God and man. A man offers his humanity to Christ so that Christ may use him as an instrument of salvation, making him, as it were, into another Christ, persona Christi. Unless we grasp the mystery of this exchange, we will not understand how a young man, hearing the words, follow me, can give up everything for Christ and the certainty that if he follows this path, he'll find complete personal fulfillment. Father Alfred McBride, an Orbertine priest from our diocese, in writing about the beauty of the priesthood, shared the story of a widower and former D.C. lawyer that he had gotten to know when he taught him at St. John the 23rd Seminary, which is for older students. Then a seminarian, George shared a con conversation that he had with his wife. When he asked her if she would die for him, his wife told him, no. She said, I'll die to defend our children. I'll die to stand up for my faith. But for you, George, I want to live. She then gave a beautiful testament of her love for him and how she wanted to love him till the end. Now, as a newly ordained priest, after he had lost his wife, Father George said, To be God's servant, for the person of loving his people, can only be experienced. I wonder how I could be so blessed. 
Confessions are at least as important to me as a penitent. To be able to give God's pardon and God's peace of mind and heart seems to be a little short of a miracle. We are all called to be imitators of Christ. We all must be especially aware of the need to come out of ourselves and show the love of Jesus by serving others. One of the main traditions of Holy Thursday Mass is the washing of feet. In today's Gospel, we're told that Jesus rose from supper, took off his outer garments, tied a towel around his waist, poured water in a basin, and washed their feet and dried them. But when Jesus got to Peter, Peter said, Master, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand it later. Peter said to Jesus, You will never wash my feet. But Jesus answered, Unless I wash your feet, you will have no inheritance with me. Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus responds, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed. This Holy Thursday, there is no washing of feet at Mass, but there will be a washing of feet, but a washing of feet by others who are now stepping in to imitate Christ. People in the medical field, doctors and nurses, lab technicians, many others are not only washing the feet of the sick, but they are risking their lives every day so others can be saved. We are told no greater love has anyone than to give their life for a friend. After Jesus ate with his disciples and washed their feet, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, and taking with him Peter, James, and John. We are told that he became troubled and distressed, and asked his disciples to keep watch with him. He advanced a little, and then fell to the ground and prayed, that if it were possible, this hour might pass him, saying, Father, all things are possible for you, if you can. Take this cup away from me, but if not, what I will, do what you will. When he returned where his disciples were, he found them asleep and asked, Could you not pray one hour with me? This Lenten season and Holy Week have been like no other. There was no chrism mass. There were no oils that were blessed. The priests did not renew their vows to the bishop. There is no washing of feet. There is no reverencing of the cross. Good Friday... And the saddest of all, there is no Eucharist, and we don't even have the privilege to be with one another. Perhaps for these reasons, we can better relate more with Jesus than we ever had in the past, when he found himself troubled and distressed and abandoned, with no one to comfort him. Several years ago, a woman told me that she prayed that she could experience some of the loneliness and the abandonment that Jesus experienced. She decided she could best do this by going to church at noon and staying there until the hour Jesus gave up his spirit at 3 p.m. She promised Jesus she would do this. She said the first two hours went by okay, but the last hour was very painful. She felt so alone. She began to reflect on her life. She remembered the many struggles that she dealt with. It was soon 2.45 and she said to herself, I can't take this anymore. So she started to walk out of the church, but then she stopped and said, No, I promised our Lord I would stay with him for those three hours, and she went back. And at the end of the hour, she realized she was granted the grace to experience some of the loneliness and abandonment Jesus must have felt when he was left all by himself. This time in history is a time of purification for us. It is a time when we experience the same loneliness and abandonment Jesus felt. It's a time when we hunger for the body and blood of Christ. But it is also a time we need to find hope and promise in the words of sacred scripture. As we read in Matthew 28, Know that I'm with you always, even until the end of time. Embrace the cross. Have faith in God. Put your trust in his unending love. And remember the words often quoted by our bishop. If the only one in the whole world, Jesus would have died just for you. It doesn't get any better than that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.